It was a typical early summer morning in the Albuquerque area, where the horizons always brimmed with the heat of the day ahead. The sky, painted in soft pink and golden hues, still retained the coolness of the night, and a light morning breeze stirred the sparse tree crowns and carried fresh aromas of wild grass mixed with the smell of earth and distant sage. Time seemed to move more slowly here, as if the morning itself gave people a chance to linger a little before the heat that would certainly hit by noon. The sun, which had just begun its path on the horizon, softly touched the ground, filling it with the first warm rays. They carefully slid along the wooden walls of the house, shimmering on the old parquet floor, and played with golden sparks on the faded curtains, creating the illusion of calm and safety. Somewhere in the distance, the quiet sounds of waking animals could be heard. The horses in the corral were restlessly shifting from foot to foot, and the cows were quietly mooing, anticipating the beginning of the day. Marla slowly woke up, her eyes lazily opened, and the silence of the night still sounded in her head. She felt the familiar warmth of the morning rays breaking through the thick fabric of the curtains that touched the windowsill and stretched, feeling the pleasant weight of fatigue in her body after a deep sleep. Her body still remembered the previous night's sleep, full of vague images from the past, which still did not let her go. In this dream, she saw her mother again, her smile, warm hands, the smell of lavender, absorbed into the old blanket with which she covered her as a child. Marla sighed, tasting the memory on her lips, and lingered in bed for a moment, listening to the steady whisper of the wind coming from the open fields. The silence of the ranch was almost tangible. It filled the house and her thoughts, giving her a sense of calm, but at the same time hinting at the many things that were waiting for her outside the threshold. She threw on a soft terry robe, its softness and cozy weight pleasantly touched the skin, covering it from the morning chill. The fabric, saturated with the aroma of purity and light freshness, seemed to give her peace. Marla paused for a moment, looking out the window where the first rays of sun were beginning to enliven the landscape. The fields behind the house, stretching to the distant hills, seemed calm and motionless, although life was already felt in their silence, the barely audible rustle of grass, birds calling to each other somewhere in the distance, and the still inaudible but familiar sounds of work on the ranch. Lost in thought, she headed to the kitchen. The warm wooden floor creaked pleasantly underfoot, and this was another sign that the house, like her, was slowly awakening. At seven in the morning, Marla knew that Kurt had already been up for about an hour, as usual. His quiet presence became her support, a familiar and reliable anchor in her daily routine. She didn't even try to get up before him. Kurt was like a part of this ranch, getting up at first light and starting the day with confidence and precision that only a watch could match. She imagined him that morning, broad shoulders, tanned hands, confidently holding a bucket of horse feed. He has probably already walked around the pen, checked how the animals are feeling, and perhaps even managed to fix something on his usual to-do list. Marla knew that he probably fed their old dog Ralph, who was no longer so playful in his years, but still faithfully followed his owner throughout the ranch. But today her inner thoughts were heavier than usual. Usually at this moment the morning brought calm and confidence, but today something was different. A strange feeling of anxiety settled in my chest, quiet but persistent, as if something important was brewing outside the usual routine. Marler ran her fingers along the old wooden table where she and Kurt always had breakfast. Memories of past years filled her thoughts moments when everything was simpler, when their life seemed measured and clear, when there was no need to think about the weight of time and unlived dreams. She took a deep breath, hoping that the smell of coffee that was about to fill the kitchen would wash away this anxious state from her. But something was still holding her inside, as if not allowing her to breathe deeply. When Marla entered the kitchen, she was immediately enveloped by the familiar smell of freshly brewed coffee, filling the warm, cozy space with the aroma that was always associated with the beginning of a new day. The kitchen was filled with the soft light of the morning sun coming through the small window above the sink. On the stove, the coffee slowly bubbled in the old metal pot that Kurt had been using for as long as she could remember, and the sound seemed to become as constant as the sound of the wind outside the window or the rustle of newspaper pages. 
Kurt, as always, sat at the wooden kitchen table with a newspaper in his hands, immersed in the morning news. His broad shoulders sagged slightly, but his every movement retained that calm confidence that Marla had always loved about him. A cup of strong black coffee stood in front of him, emitting light steam. There was already her cup on the table nearby with a small amount of milk, just the way she liked it. It was one of those little things that Kurt did for her without further ado, just out of quiet understanding and habit. Once such details made her smile, reminded her of care and attention, but now she perceived them as part of everyday life, as something taken for granted, unnoticed, but constant. Good morning, sweetheart, he said softly, his voice smooth and friendly, with the warmth that always radiated from him at the beginning of the day. He looked up from the newspaper and gave her a short smile, so familiar and reliable that Marla's heart sank with conflicting feelings. His eyes, although slightly tired, retained the same warm hue that she knew from the first days of their life together, but they now reflected not only kindness, but also the shadow of time, the passing of years and many unspoken words. How did you sleep? He asked, continuing to read the newspaper, but his attention was still directed at her, even if his eyes were focused on the text. There was concern in his question, although, like so much else between them, it was already part of the ritual every morning Kurt was interested in her sleep, and every morning Marla answered almost the same. Okay, dear, she said mechanically, sitting down at the table. She wrapped her hands around the warm cup and took her first sip of coffee. The hot drink burned her lips, but this sensation only momentarily distracted her from the heavy thoughts that had haunted her in recent weeks. The taste of the milk mixed with the bitterness of the coffee, and although it always made her feel more alert, today something was different. Even the familiar taste could not return her to the feeling of stability to which she was accustomed. Kurt was immersed in his newspaper again, and Marla stared blankly into the kitchen, trying to find an answer to her worries. She was surrounded by the same surroundings as dozens of times before. Wooden cabinets with worn edges, in the corner there was a basket with freshly brought vegetables from the garden, and next to it was the old stove on which they cooked dinner every evening. But today everything seemed somehow different, as if the usual things had lost their significance, had become just a background for her wandering thoughts. Her gaze lingered for a moment on Kurt, on his slightly whitened temples and facial wrinkles that he did not seem to notice. Once upon a time, she could have said without hesitation that she knew every feature of his face, every movement. But today she caught herself thinking that something had changed. Perhaps it wasn't Kurt's appearance, but something deeper, something she had ignored for a long time. Kurt looked at her over the edge of the newspaper, squinting slightly, as if he was trying to read something more in her face than just traces of morning fatigue. His eyes fell on Marla for a moment, and he slowly put the newspaper aside, folding it neatly on the table as always. We need to buy hay, he said. His voice was even and matter-of-fact, as if he was continuing their conversation from yesterday, which, like many others, had disappeared into the stream of everyday affairs. He leaned back slightly in his chair and added, I'll stop by after work and pick up ten bales. As usual. Marla nodded without looking up from her cup. Her voice was as even and calm as his, but inside, underneath the outer calm, anxiety was flaring up, which had been haunting her for several days. She wondered how many times they had had similar conversations before about hay, about work, about horses. All this was part of their life, unchanged like the sunset in the desert behind their house. But today she felt that behind these words there was something more hidden, something that they both preferred to remain silent about. Be sure to take the alfalfa oat grass mixture, she added, trying to sound more confident than she actually felt. You know how much they love her. Kurt nodded, humming slightly in agreement, his lips curling into a small smile. This was their usual thing, one of the hundreds of worries that always hung in the air and filled their days, crowding out everything else. But behind this external routine, behind the usual phrases, there was a certain emptiness that Marla could not explain even to herself. Her anxiety grew every day, and despite the fact that Kurt was nearby, she felt an invisible wall forming between them, imperceptible, but palpable in their every conversation, in every glance. 
Kurt picked up the newspaper again, but before he went back to reading, he looked at Marla a little more closely, as if he was about to say something, but decided against it. He understood her better than she sometimes realized, and he had noticed that her mood had changed in recent weeks. But they are both accustomed to hiding their inner experiences behind words that have long become automatic. You seem to want to buy something too, he added casually, clearly trying to fill the pause between them. Maybe we can go into the city together. At the same time, let's take a break from work. Marla looked at him with her eyebrows raised slightly, surprised by the proposal. They rarely went out together every day was filled with chores and worries about the household. But his proposal sounded unexpected, and for a moment her heart skipped a beat, as if it was weak, but still a step in her direction. Maybe, she answered reservedly, trying to hide her slight confusion. I also have business in the city. But even this small attempt to break out of the routine could not dispel her thoughts. She felt an invisible thread of tension trailing behind every word, which kept them both captive to habits, preventing them from saying what was really troubling them. Marla continued to drink her coffee in silence, trying to keep all these emotions inside, as she had done for many years. Weeks have passed since Marla started dating Brian. He was her colleague, an engineer, just like Kurt, but with one important difference his presence was new, fresh, like a light wind that suddenly burst into her life. Every time she was with him, her world began to seem different, brighter, more vibrant, as if all the colors that had long faded suddenly came to life again. He was not part of her long, monotonous life. His words sounded different, each glance brought that feeling of novelty and intrigue that she had long ago lost in her marriage to Kurt. One day, sitting at the lunch table in a small cafe on the outskirts of town, where the walls were painted in warm osher tones and the smell of fresh baked goods hung in the air, Marla and Brian had a conversation that changed everything. Outside, outside the windows, the rain was falling steadily, leaving dark spots on the sidewalk, but inside there was a calm, almost intimate atmosphere. Marla felt how excitement gradually covered her tightening her chest with an invisible thread. Her fingers drummed nervously on the rim of her cooling coffee cup, although she tried to remain calm, as if this was just another friendly dinner. Have you ever thought that life suddenly stopped surprising? She asked. Her voice was quiet, but there was a deep, old melancholy in it. She did not raise her eyes, afraid to meet his gaze. Brian, thoughtfully sipping his tea, stopped the movement of his hand and raised his eyes to her, carefully studying her face, as if trying to understand what was hidden behind this question. Often, he admitted after a pause, his voice was quiet, but there was a sincerity in it that pierced her to the depths of her soul. Sometimes I feel like we're all just stuck in the same day. Work, home, children. But something inside is burning out. You feel it, right? These words, simple and clear, hit where it hurt most. Marla nodded, not daring to speak right away. Her soul responded to his words, as if it had finally found someone who understood her inner emptiness, which all this time remained invisible to others. It was this connection that attracted her to Brian, this ability to be on the same wavelength. He was not just a man for her, but a reflection of her own fears, insecurities, and aspirations. When I first saw you at work, she said quietly, trying not to meet his gaze, you seemed different to me. And it grabbed me. You were the one who brought something new, and that saved me. Her words hung in the air, and she felt a heaviness growing in her chest from the realization that she was saying something that she had long suppressed. It was a risk, a step beyond what was permitted. Brian looked at her carefully, his eyes expressing both misunderstanding and something more sympathy, a desire to understand, perhaps his own hidden concern. Marla felt her heart beat faster as she finally looked up at him. This was the moment when she knew she had gone too far, when the inner barrier had been crossed and there was no turning back. But despite this, she could not stop. I feel it too, Marla, Brian said softly, his voice low, almost a whisper, as if they were discussing something secret that should not be said out loud. But how far can we go? What does this mean for us? He was frank and serious, and it added weight to their conversation that wasn't there before. 
This moment was a turning point for both of them. Brian's question hung in the air, making her wonder what they were doing, what they were really feeling, and what was next for them. Marla took a deep breath, trying to calm herself, but the excitement continued to burst out. Her meeting with Brian filled her with life, joy, excitement, feelings that she had not experienced with Kurt for so long. His every glance, every word excited her heart, making her forget about the dull everyday life. But every time she returned home to Kurt, to their home and normal life, she was overcome by a wave of guilt, dark and all-consuming. She knew that she was cheating not only physically, but also emotionally. This thought tormented her, making her heart clench with fear and anxiety about what might happen next. Meanwhile, Kurt began to notice small but disturbing changes in their lives. They used to get up together, slowly start the morning over a cup of coffee, and discuss upcoming matters. Now, Marla increasingly left for work earlier than usual, sometimes without even having time to drink her coffee. Her gaze became distant, as if she was not here, but in some other place where Kurt had no place. When he tried to talk to her, she answered politely, but somehow dryly, as if her thoughts were absorbed in something important, something that he could not understand. He noticed her anxiety, he was disturbed by these moments of silence, when she simply looked out the window, not hearing him, not noticing the usual things around her. Kurt felt a gap beginning to grow between them, but he didn't know how to bridge it. They had always lived a steady, ranch-style life, and Kurt was proud of the fact that he provided stability in their lives, a strong foundation on which to build their future. He was never good at expressing his feelings, but he thought that reliability and predictability were what Marla always appreciated in him. But now his world began to crack, like an old wooden beam that had carried the entire weight of the house for years and suddenly began to give in under an invisible load. Kurt found himself thinking more and more often about Marla. What was she thinking? What was she hiding behind her new habits? Why has she changed so much? Previously, he could predict her every action, her mood, but now something alien, unfamiliar appeared in her. She was returning home late, and although she said that work was taking up more and more time, Kurt couldn't help but feel that there was more to it than that. He noticed that even her touches had become different. They no longer carried the tenderness and warmth that had once been like air to him. Their conversations turned into an exchange of simple phrases about business, about the house, about the household, but behind them there was no intimacy that had previously filled their days. Now these were almost mechanical dialogues, and every day Kurt felt more and more distant from her, as if his role in her life had become secondary. On dark, sleepless nights, lying in their shared bed, he looked at sleeping Marla, her face shrouded in the soft light of the moon, and wondered what had changed. What happened to their life, which previously seemed so simple and understandable? Kurt has always considered himself a man who is able to maintain order and stability. But now this confidence began to crumble, and with it the world that he and Marla had been building for years collapsed. One day, as the workday was drawing to a close, Kurt received a call that would change his life forever. The phone on his desk rang suddenly with a sharp, alarming sound. Kurt automatically picked up the phone, expecting to hear the voice of one of his colleagues or suppliers, but instead he heard an alien, cold voice that immediately made him tense. Kurt? asked the stranger. His tone was even, but there was a harshness to it, as if the man was absolutely sure of what he was going to say. Yes, it's me, Kurt replied, frowning slightly. A thought flashed through my head. Who could it be? Your wife has something to hide, the stranger said without preamble. I don't know how you don't notice it, but she's cheating on you. The word sounded like thunder from a clear sky, Kurt froze, as if he had been suddenly knocked out of his usual rhythm. He clutched the phone tightly, trying to understand what had just happened. It was as if something had snapped inside him, but he did not allow panic to take over him. Who are you? He asked, his voice trembling with anger and unexpected fear. What kind of nonsense is this? This is not nonsense, Kurt. The voice on the other end of the line was calm, without a hint of doubt. You better take a closer look at your wife. She's been with someone else for a long time. You yourself will understand everything if you start to notice obvious things. 
she is deceiving you. Kurt felt his heart clench. He didn't want to believe these words and couldn't allow it to be true. Images of Marla, their life together, her smile, her care flashed through his head. But something stirred inside him, like a healed wound, and that cold voice awakened long-standing doubts in him. Why are you calling me? What do you need from me? He said, but his voice was no longer so firm. I don't need anything, the voice answered calmly. I just think you should know the truth. Look at her more closely, and you will understand everything. Then there was a short beep, and the call ended, leaving Kurt in deafening silence. He remained seated, clutching the phone so tightly that his knuckles turned white. Thoughts rustled in his head, one after another, like stretched strings. Marla is cheating. How is this possible? Who is this man, and what does he know? These questions rushed through his mind like a whirlwind, but he could not find an answer. At first he wanted to dismiss it all as lies, dirty gossip. But the more he thought about it, the more uneasy he felt. In recent weeks, Marla really was different distant, absent-minded. Her gaze often wandered off into the distance. She left early for work and returned later than usual. Her behavior had long seemed strange, but until that moment Kurt had driven away all suspicions, assuring himself that these were just temporary difficulties and fatigue. But now, after this call, he could no longer ignore the signals. Kurt tried to calm himself down, but he couldn't shake the panic that was setting in. He didn't want to believe it, but his heart, as if sensing the truth, was beating faster every second. From that moment on, Kurt began to monitor Marla more closely. He watched how she got ready for work, how she spent more time in front of the mirror, how her phone became out of reach. He began to notice that she was more likely to get nervous when he called, or to abruptly change the subject when it came to her days at the office. Her smiles when she returned home were strained, as if she was trying to hide something under a mask. Every new step she took seemed suspicious to him, every word unsaid. A few days later, his worst fears were confirmed. He saw it himself. One evening, when Marla said she would be late at work, Kurt decided to drive to her office. Standing in the parking lot, he saw her not come out alone. There was a man next to her tall, confident, and they were talking too close, too intimate. When they stopped in front of the car, Marla said something, and the man, without thinking, leaned over and kissed her. That moment shattered Kurt's world. His heart sank as if everything he believed in was crumbling before his eyes. At that moment, he realized that the gap that was growing between them was much deeper than he could have imagined. Kurt stood in the shadows, as if rooted to the ground, unable to move. His heart beat dull and heavy, like a hammer that struck the walls of his chest over and over again, echoing with pain. Everything was happening in front of him, as if in slow motion Marla, his wife, the same woman with whom he had lived for many years, kissing another man. Their faces were so close, their movements so natural, that it was not just betrayal, it was a knife in the heart. He turned away abruptly, unable to look any longer, and leaned against the hood of his car. The metal was cold, but his body burned with betrayal. Thoughts, one after another, flooded into him, as chaotic as the wind that swirled the desert sand. How could she? How long has this been going on? Why didn't I notice anything? Every question pierced his mind, but there were no answers. The silence of the night, which was usually soothing, now seemed dull and empty to him. Kurt clenched his fists, his nails digging into his palms. Anger, pain, disappointment, everything was mixed up in a whirlwind of emotions. He wanted to scream, to throw everything out, but his voice seemed to disappear, swallowed up by a storm of feelings. Instead, he yanked the car door open and got behind the wheel, slamming it so hard the window shook. He sat there for a few seconds, looking in the rearview mirror, in the reflection, the same man, the one who stole Marla from him, stood next to her, hugging her waist. Kurt revved the engine, as if trying to drown out his own thoughts, and roared out of the parking lot without looking back. The asphalt flashed under the wheels, and the darkness of the night swallowed the road in front of him. But in my head, like a broken record, the same thing was repeated. She betrayed me. Back at the ranch, Kurt felt neither time nor energy. 
the door slammed behind him, and the empty house greeted him with deathly silence. His footsteps echoed across the wooden floor. In this silence, where he had previously found solace, there was now only one thing devastation. He walked into the kitchen, where everything was as usual. Marla's cup was still on the table from her morning coffee. Kurt walked up to her and automatically touched her with his fingers, as if he wanted to feel a part of the Marla he knew. But at that moment his eyes filled with pain, and he threw the cup to the floor with a flourish. It crashed, and the sound of the crash seemed to echo in his chest. The night air suddenly filled the room as Marla entered the house. She froze in the doorway when she saw Kurt standing among the shards of her cup. Their gazes met. Kurt. Her voice was quiet, but there was fear in it. She knew something had happened. You're cheating on me, Marla. His voice was hoarse, as if every letter was pronounced with force. I saw you. She froze. Time seemed to stand still. Her face turned pale, and her hands automatically went to her neck, as if she was trying to hold back a scream. But she didn't say anything. Say something. Kurt stepped towards her, his anger now directed directly at her, like an avalanche that was about to cover her headlong. How could you? After everything we've had, after all the years, Marla covered her face with her hands in despair, her shoulders shaking as if she were cold. Tears, which she did not want to show, began to flow from her eyes anyway. Kurt, I. She trailed off, unable to find the words. But what could she say? How can such betrayal be explained? I didn't want this to happen. You didn't want to. His voice boomed like thunder. I didn't want to. What did you want then? You stood there with him, Marla. You kissed him like it was normal, like you. Love him. The last words came to him with incredible pain. Marla closed her eyes, her tears falling onto the wooden floor, but she couldn't look him in the eyes. Everything that she had hidden for so long that she had tried to suppress now burst out. She knew she was hurting him, but the words had to be said. I don't know what happened, she whispered. It happened somehow by itself. He, he gave me something that we no longer had. Kurt, hearing this, seemed to fall into an abyss. His arms fell limply to his sides. A deep emptiness spread inside him, because he understood that this was not just betrayal, it was something deeper. What we no longer had? He said it quietly, as if he was afraid to hear the answer. Marla sobbed again, but looked into his eyes, mustering all her courage. Her gaze was full of pain and regret. Love, Kurt, she finally said. Love and life. I felt that we were no longer living, that we were simply existing next to each other. The words hit Kurt harder than he could have imagined. Everything he had hoped for, that they could get through this together, was crushed overnight. Marla not only left for someone else, she no longer saw their future together. He was silent for several moments, struggling with the inner storm. But finally his voice became quiet, cold. So why didn't you just leave? Why did you lie? Why didn't you tell me that you don't love me anymore? Marla couldn't answer. She was also empty inside, just like him. All the feelings she once felt were now intertwined with guilt and regret. She didn't know what to say, how to explain that once their love really was everything to her. But it died out like an old fire, and only emptiness came in its place. I don't know. These were the only words she could say. Kurt looked away. He didn't need any more words. Everything became clear, clearer than ever. He took a step back, retreating from her, as if retreating from his entire past life. I'll leave, he said, as if putting an end to it. You don't have to pretend anymore. He turned around without waiting for her answer. Marla stood paralyzed in the same position, squeezing her face with her hands, and heard Kurt's footsteps moving away down the corridor. His heavy breathing and the sound of the door opening were the last signs that he was still there. When the door finally slammed shut, her body went limp, as if her strength had gone with it. The house was once again plunged into deathly silence, but this silence had now become unbearable. It was like a tearing void in which there was nothing left but the awareness of her mistakes. Her hands fell powerlessly along her body, and her gaze fell on the fragments of a broken cup on the floor. The cup Kurt used to pour her coffee every day. 
A small thing she had previously taken for granted now became a symbol of everything she had destroyed. Marla slowly sat down on the kitchen chair, her hands shaking, and she could not stop the flow of tears. They flowed uncontrollably, mixing the bitterness of loss with the realization that there was no turning back. Meanwhile, Kurt was driving along the road that led away from the ranch, away from everything that connected him with Marla. He squeezed the steering wheel, trying to drown out the pain and rage, but they would not let him go. Marla's words echoed in his head, Love and life, I felt like we weren't living anymore. He hit the steering wheel with his fist, venting on it everything that had accumulated inside. But it didn't help. He didn't know where he was going. The only thing he knew for sure was that he could no longer return to the life he shared with Marla. Kurt has always been a man of action. If something broke on the ranch, he fixed it. If the cattle were sick, he took care of them. If force had to be applied, he did it without hesitation. But how do you fix what's broken between them? How to regain lost trust and love? There was no answer. He stopped the car somewhere on a deserted road framed by the desert. The wind blew sand across the asphalt, but Kurt didn't notice. He got out of the car, feeling his legs give way under the weight of what had happened. Leaning against the hood, he closed his eyes, hoping that this would somehow ease his pain. But thoughts about Marla, about what she said, about what he saw with his own eyes, continued to burn him from the inside. Why didn't I notice? He asked himself again and again. Why didn't you feel that she was getting lost? That our relationship is falling apart? There were no answers, and there was no way back. Marla was right. Their love faded. But he never realized it. He always thought that their routine life was what bound them tightly together. He was proud of their simplicity, their stability, but for Marla it became a cage. Several minutes passed before he got back into the car. The engine started with a dull roar, and Kurt, without thinking about where to go, went to the only place that could give him at least some clarity to the old barn where he kept his tools and where he always found peace in work. At this time, Marla was sitting in the kitchen, surrounded by ghosts of the past. Her head was heavy with tears, but in her heart she felt that relief was not coming. Kurt was gone, and most of her life went with him. No matter how much she wanted to justify her actions, her heart knew that all this time she had been lying not only to him, but also to herself. She remembered the first time she and Kurt came to this ranch. Young, full of dreams, they looked at these fields and saw a future that seemed cloudless to them. Kurt has always been a reliable support for her, a person she can rely on, but now all this is in the past. Her thoughts turned back to Brian. Yes, he gave her that sense of newness that she didn't have with Kurt. Attention, excitement, passion, all this reminded her that she was still alive, that she was still capable of feeling. But now that she had lost Kurt, she began to doubt whether this was really what she wanted. Her phone rang and Marla jumped. It was Brian. Hello, his voice was even, but she detected a slight worry in him. How are you? Marla was silent. She didn't know what to say. This was the man with whom she had started a new life, but now she couldn't help but feel guilty for ruining the old one. Kurt knows, she finally whispered, her voice shaking. There was a long pause on the other end of the line. What did he say? Brian asked, his voice becoming tense. He left. I don't know what will happen next. Marla, you don't need to think about it anymore, Brian said quietly but confidently. We can start all over again. Together. These words should have made her happy, but instead they only raised more doubts. Start over again, she thought. But can she start a new life when the old one crumbles to dust before her eyes? I'm not sure, she said, and this was the first time she said it out loud. What are you talking about? Brian was clearly puzzled. I'm not sure I can just forget everything that Kurt and I had, everything that I destroyed. Her confession hit Brian unexpectedly. He apparently did not expect that at the moment when their relationship could become official, she would still be thinking about her past. Marla, he began, but there was now a hint of irritation in his voice. You have to make a decision. You can't be in two places at once either with him or with me. These words pierced her. 
Brian was right. But in that moment, she realized one thing. Her heart still belonged to Kurt, despite all the pain she caused. I need time, she said quietly, almost in a whisper. Time? Brian asked, clearly not expecting such an answer. But we've already delayed this too long. Marla fell silent. She didn't know how to explain what she felt. She wasn't ready to lose Kurt completely. She couldn't just wipe out their lives. But she also knew that Brian couldn't wait forever. I'm sorry, was all she could say, and this word hung in the air like a harbinger of the end. Brian was silent for a few seconds before saying coldly, Understood. Then that's it. The connection was cut off, and Marla was left alone, surrounded by the silence of her empty house. For the first time in a long time, she felt that she had destroyed her life, and now she had to find a way to get at least part of it back. Kurt returned to the ranch late at night, when the stars had already lit up the skies. The car stopped gently in front of the house, and he saw light in the kitchen window. His heart sank, but he could no longer avoid this conversation. Kurt slowly stepped out of the car, feeling the night air hit his face. The silence of the ranch, usually so calm, now seemed alarming to him. The light in the kitchen, the only sign of life in the house, felt like a call, an invitation to come back and face what he had been trying to avoid all day. He stopped in front of the door, his hand frozen on the handle. A storm of emotions flared up inside, pain, anger, disappointment, but most of all, a vague feeling of regret. He took a deep breath and pushed the door open. The creaking of the hinges seemed to cut through the silence of the night, and Kurt stepped inside. Marla sat at the kitchen table, her face tired and drawn, as if years of her life had suddenly been compressed into those few hours. She didn't look at him right away, she just clasped her hands tighter around the cup, as if the meaning of her existence was hidden in this movement. Kurt stopped at the entrance, his eyes falling on the broken cup he had thrown hours ago. The torn pieces scattered on the floor became a symbol of their ruined lives. You're still here, he said quietly, breaking the silence. Marla raised her head slightly, her gaze empty, filled with pain and remorse. She nodded slowly, her voice trembling as if every sound brought physical pain. I couldn't leave, she said, barely audible. Not like that. Not now. Kurt sighed restrainedly and walked to the table and sat down opposite her. They were both silent. Their gazes avoided each other, as if there was a barrier between them that could not be overcome. What now? He finally asked, his voice hoarse and tired. These two words carried the full weight of uncertainty and pain. Marla paused for a moment, as if gathering her thoughts. Her eyes filled with tears, but she tried to hold them back so as not to burst into tears in front of him again. I... I don't know, Kurt. Her voice was quiet, almost a whisper. I never thought it would go this far. I'm confused. All I wanted was to feel alive again, but I didn't think I'd hurt you like this. Kurt frowned, clenching his fists on the table. It hurt him to hear this, but it hurt even more to realize that part of him understood her. He himself felt how their life was becoming monotonous, how their relationship was gradually losing the spark that once connected them. But he never thought that Marlo would go so far in search of what they were missing. You could have talked to me, he said, his voice sounding even, but there was an internal struggle in it. I could say that you feel unhappy, that something is wrong. Damn, Marla, why didn't you tell me? I tried. She suddenly flared up, her voice trembling from pent-up emotions. How many times have I tried? But you didn't hear me, Kurt. You were consumed with work, the ranch. We just weren't the same people we used to be. Kurt looked down at the table, the weight of her words pressing on his heart. He knew she was right, but that didn't ease his pain. I... He hesitated, trying to find the words, I really wasn't the same as before. But all this time I thought that you were happy. I tried to be the one who provides for us, who cares about you, about our future. Marla sighed, her hands shaking as she set the cup down on the table. I don't blame you, Kurt. It's my fault, too. We're both lost in it all. But I... I made a mistake, and I know it. They fell silent again. This silence was not unpleasant, 
but rather painful, as if they were both trying to find a way out of the labyrinth into which they had driven themselves. Do you love him? Kurt asked suddenly. His voice was almost indifferent, but Marla felt that there was a huge force of emotion behind it. Her gaze darted to him. The question came unexpectedly, and she lowered her eyes again, not knowing what to answer. She was silent for a long time, trying to comprehend her feelings. Brian gave her what she and Kurt didn't have passion, newness, a sense of life. But love? Was it true love, or just an illusion generated by longing for lost youth? I don't know, she finally admitted, her voice filled with doubt. It was something different, not like you and I. Maybe it was just an attempt to fill the void, but that doesn't mean I wanted to lose you. Kurt looked at her, his face remaining tense. These words did not bring him relief, but there was an honesty in them that at least a little softened his pain. So what now? He repeated again. What are we going to do? Marla bit her lip for a moment as her hands began to shake again. She was afraid to say it out loud, but she knew that the answer was inevitable. I think. We need time, she said quietly. We both need to understand ourselves, what we need. I don't know what's next, Kurt. But if we continue like this, we will simply destroy each other. Kurt nodded, although he was torn apart by conflicting feelings. Marla's words rang true, but they didn't bring him any relief. He knew that without time and distance, they wouldn't be able to sort out their feelings, but the thought hurt him more than he could admit. Okay, he said. His voice was even, although emotions were boiling in his soul. I'll be leaving for a few days. I need to think. Marla nodded in response, not knowing what to say. She knew it was necessary, but every moment he was about to leave felt like a sharp pain. She wanted to stop him, to tell him that they could cope together, but she knew that was a lie. She herself needed this time to understand what their past really meant to her and what she had lost. Kurt slowly rose from his chair and headed towards the exit. He paused at the door for a moment, his hand hovering on the handle. Marla, he said quietly, without turning around, if you decide that he is more important, tell me. I deserve to know. He walked out, leaving her alone with the weight of these words. Marla remained silent. Tears rolled down her cheeks again, but she didn't try to stop them. Her life which she had built for a long time together with Kurt, was now crumbling before her eyes. Marla remained sitting in the kitchen, listening as the silence of the house enveloped her again. Her hands nervously fingered the cold cup, and every sound, every rustle seemed to her a painful reminder that the choice she would make would change everything. This was the moment of truth. Kurt left, leaving her with a request a request to be honest, even if it completely ruins their lives. Hours passed, but the solution did not come easily. Memories flashed through her mind, those rare happy days with Kurt when their love was strong, and those moments when she felt lost in their routine. And of course, her thoughts returned to Brian, who gave her a sense of newness, passion, the opportunity to start life anew. But now, left alone, she realized that this feeling that Brian had awakened in her may have been an illusion, a short burst that had no depth. As dawn began to paint the sky with pale hues, Marla made a decision. She knew that she could not live another life, running from one feeling to another, constantly looking for something new. She could not build a life on a passion that could disappear as quickly as it appeared. What she found in Brian turned out to be temporary passionate, but temporary. Her heart, despite all the pain, still belonged to Kurt. She decided to stay with him. This decision came with heaviness and awareness of all the mistakes she had made. She knew Kurt was her home. Even though their life had become routine, even if she felt loneliness in their marriage, it was something real, based on years of living together, on trust that she herself had destroyed. Kurt had always been her anchor, and now she understood that in order to save their marriage, she needed to fight, not run away. Marla rose from the table and looked at the old, but familiar ranch that she and Kurt had been building for years. Her whole world was here. She couldn't just give it all up for someone who she now realized was just a temporary escape from her problems, not a solution. Later, a few days later, Kurt returned. He entered the house with a stony expression on his face, ready to hear any truth, even the most bitter one. 
Marla met him at the door. There was anxiety in her eyes, but at the same time determination. She knew this conversation would be a turning point. Kurt, she began, her voice quiet but firm, I thought for a long time. And I realized that I was mistaken. I was looking for a way out when I should have been looking for a way to save us. Brian, he was just an escape from problems from our discord. But that's not what I really want. Kurt stood listening to her, his face showing no emotion. He was silent for a long time, pondering her words, and finally asked, Are you sure? Marla nodded, her voice trembling, but her eyes expressed sincerity. I love you, Kurt, and I want to save our marriage. It won't be easy, but I'm ready to fight for us. You are my home, and I don't want to lose it. Kurt looked at her for a long time, his gaze softened, and he took a step closer. You hurt me, Marla. His voice was low, but there was no anger in it. But I'm also to blame. I didn't notice that we were losing each other. I don't know if I can forgive you right away, but I want to try. Kurt's words brought her relief. She knew it wouldn't be easy, but it was the first step to healing their marriage. They stood opposite each other, separated by the past, but ready to start anew. Kurt slowly extended his hand, and Marla took it without hesitation. There was a promise in that simple movement, a promise to try to build it all over again, but this time with honesty, openness, and a willingness to fight for what was lost. Weeks passed and life on the ranch began to change. Kurt and Marla talked more, discussed their feelings, shared what was bothering them. They began to devote time to each other, restoring lost intimacy. Not all days were easy, there were times when old wounds opened up and the pain returned. But each time they decided to move on, to work on becoming a real family again. Marla never saw Brian again. She broke all ties with him, realizing that her future with Kurt was much more important than the brief surge of passion that she experienced. Brian, as she thought, was an illusion, a blip in her life, but not someone who could become her future. Several months after that fateful conversation, Marla woke up at dawn. She walked out onto the porch of the ranch and saw Kurt standing among the fields illuminated by the first rays of the sun. He looked back and, seeing her, smiled not the forced smile that he had before, but sincerely with warmth that she had not seen in his eyes for so long. At that moment, Marla realized that their journey was just beginning. This was a new stage in their lives, where everything would be different with pain, but also with new hopes. She chose Kurt, chose their shared home, chose their life. And now, despite all the difficulties, she knew that they could cope. Subscribe to our channel so that your love doesn't cheat on you, and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think click to the next one. Click to the next one. Click to the next 